Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I am delighted to be joined uh, by Vada and Kabir uh, from Fandango at the Wall. Welcome to you both. Uh, big virtual hug from us uh, at New Filmmakers. Um, but for those that haven't seen the film, let's take a look at a clip. Ni vimos a vender, ni vimos a comprar. Vimos a dar gracias a la gente de Tijuana, la gente de México, por ser un ejemplo para nosotros. Y además, para ser un ejemplo para los músicos y los artistas que tienen una misión para cambiar el mundo. Y al fandango fronterizo, que viva... Que viva México! Que viva Fandango! Que viva! I'm, I feel honored to be uh, in your presence. I've been so excited to talk about your film. Um, Vada, um, our wonderful director, uh, for, for those that haven't seen Fandango at the Wall, tell us a brief synopsis of the film. Well, essentially, um, it follows Arturo O'Farrell, who's the founder and conductor of the Afro-Latin Jazz Orchestra in New York City, who'd read an article about a festival called Fandango Fronterizo, founded by Jorge Francisco Castillo, and it takes place on both sides of the border. So he reaches out to his producer, Kabir Segal, and they talk about uh, this incredible experience and decide that they're going to take uh, the orchestra to, to the border to be part of the Fandango Fronterizo. And Jorge, um, the, the festival's in the spirit of um, a 300-year-old mystical uh, Mexican musical music tradition called San Jarocho that combines uh, Mexican, indigenous, and um, African traditions, Spanish, indigenous, African traditions. And so Jorge decides that, you know, they must go and meet the masters of Sonoracho and he takes them to the remotest regions of Veracruz, Mexico, where this tradition originated. And um, he, they, they meet these amazing masters and then they all come back to the border. I don't want to say too much about it. I hate to kind of talk about the film in that much detail because I really want the audience to appreciate and discover it as we go. But that's it in essence. No, thank you for sharing. And, and you know, I, ha I have had the honor of, of knowing you and, and, and calling you a friend. So I was delighted to hear that, that your film was, was programmed um, with us at, at New Filmmakers LA. And what was so exciting was knowing you. And I remember you going through this journey and how excited and passionate you were about this project. So obviously you met Kabir and, and I'm so glad you found each other because you really did have the dream team here. Um, but where did the inspiration come for you? When was that moment for you, Vard, as a director, for you, Kabir, to come together where it's like, we have to turn this into a full feature film? Like, it, 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 we, it's crying out for it. When was that moment? It happened quickly. It happened quickly. Um, you know, I, have, I made probably five or six albums with Arturo before. And something about this project, it was the juxtaposition of the wall and the music. Um, because the music is about harmony and coming together and a wall is about the opposite, about division. And it just seemed like that contrast was enough of a tension to say, this is, there's something here. But there's a problem. I'm a music guy. I didn't know any film people at all. I, like, I can barely turn on a, a camera. So, <laughs> so uh, we sort of put out into the universe that they're just people in the... I knew, once, knew someone who had worked in the film industry and I said, do you know anyone? And they sent out word, and um, the answer to our answer to uh, our um, prayers was Varda. She came, and we we want to make a movie. And this was just a few weeks before everything, we started rolling on the cameras, and we didn't have a lot of time to prep. But Varda jumped right into it, and um, you know, one thing just led to the other, and it just started to pick up steam. And it is it's amazing that snowball, and like now we're here, you know, with this film on HBO, and it just feels like this avalanche of like, and I feel like if you just bring good people together is can be hard to, to mess things up. And so yeah. I feel like this project has just attracted 
great music, great film team, uh, great um, technical support on the production side. It's really attracted so many people who are just flocking to this idea of Esperanza and uh, Alegria, hope and, uh, and love and energy. And I think that's something we need more in the world today because it's hard to find. A hundred, one hundred percent. And honestly, I have tears in my eyes just thinking about the film again and, and the places you took us and the people that you introduced to us in the film. Um, the one thing I love about, you know, Vada in the films that you create is you just take us right in there. And when you were traveling through Mexico and, and, and just taking us in these precious like moments, like I, I was so glad that you captured it because in so many, and I know we've spoken about this where it's almost overproduced where you don't feel anything and you took us right there like I was sitting there experienced this dance and this music was that something that was important to you to kind of capture as well because this really was about heart love and music absolutely I mean the intention right from the start was that we were going to bring our audience along with us on this journey they were and, we, and what's so marvelous about it is it really was um journey of discovery for everybody involved and so it's very organic in that sense because the audience is discovering as we're discovering so that's you know as people are looking around as you see in the car when they're talking about the chinecas and trying to sort out you know the roots of of uh san Horacho and you know as they're meeting people like this is actually happening as you're seeing it Mm -hmm. and so it, it lends itself very well to that and even in the way that we use the camera um, Matt Porwell is the cinematographer and I had spoken ahead of time and he did an extraordinary job, I think, uh, with his mm -hmm. cinematography. It was amazing. And we had, you know, multiple cameras going um, at sometimes up to five, six, seven cameras when we did the concert in New York. But, uh, you know, Matt and I talked about, you know, I really, I wanted the audience to be moving with us. So often when we very first arrived, actually, he would put on this rig called a Ronin which is kind of combined. We also had two cameras standing by and ready. One was a handheld camera and one was the Ronin. Mm -hmm. And the, the Ronin really gives the sense of, like, it's, it's almost feels, it feels more like a point of view than the handheld camera. Because the handheld camera is always going to have a little bit more kind of movement to it. It's, it's, it's easier to use um, and it's easier to get really intimate and close with the handheld camera, but it doesn't have the fluidity um, that you really feel like as you're walking and you're seeing things. So we use that camera as the audience's point of view. So they're entering into spaces from their perspective. Mm. And then, you know, and then you're discovering seeing things from that perspective. And then, you, you know, and then some of our characters, you know, will come into the frame and, and so forth. So that's one of the ways that we used, um, you know, camera movement to bring the audience along with us. But that was definitely, you know, my my intention 100 percent. i mean it, it came through i almost and and like people said at the film festival we actually didn't want it to end like we loved the places and the feeling that you were giving us as well which was which was amazing now kabir you, you worked with arturo you know and you're both extremely extremely successful in your in your field and 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 i love that you have such a great relationship together how was arturo's kind of feeling because it's very different from creating music to actually having that as part of a film like how was his kind of feeling about it and and going into new ventures for you as well our tour is very adventurous and uh we've we've been in many adventures together um but this one certainly felt uh different you know we're both um he's an immigrant i'm a, the son of immigrants so the story of sort of discovery uh was one that we really felt passionate about and um also we're not we're making this film not in a vacuum. There's a context in what's going on in the U.S. political circles, right? And so he and I have both been outspoken advocates of more sensible immigration policy and what that looks like and how to, how to say, look, there is a 200-year relationship between the United States and Mexico, and there have been wars and there's been conflict, but there's also been decades of working together and we do joint military operations together and we have trade and there is a positive story to be told here. And so Arturo was really um, passionate about taking on this project because of um, how we could rebalance the conversation. I often like to say when I pick on, when I take on projects, I don't want to just respond to the news. I want to make the news. Mm -hmm. And here is a way that we can rewrite some of the headlines and say, did you know there's this film team? That's, did you know there's a Fandango? 
um, I would love for the State Department to U.S. State Department to um, uh, throw fandangos with me Mexican counterparts. If there's a rapprochement that goes on uh, between the two countries, let's hope for the next few months or whatever happens, I think fandangos should be part of that. Can you imagine the, the cultural di diplomats, us leading an official uh, delegation to Mexico City, to Veracruz and having a fandango together and having um, the, the TV cameras rolling. I mean, that would be like this complete reset in how we think about. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in arts, um, not th arts through gentle activism is saying, you know, fil filmmakers have to create the world they want to see because no one else is, cre is creating it. We're going to create the image to inspire. So Arturo um, was, was very much a part of it. I know Varda believed in that passionately. I know Jorge, um, the librarian. And I have to say, uh, I've been very pleasantly surprised. Fandango at the Wall, as you know, was on HBO. And HBO has been very um, positive in this. They're part of the, you know, the Warner Media ecosystem. And they're, they're a big believer in positive, wanting to get out and share this feeling of warmth and, and heartwarming. So it's been very encouraging working with our production partners at Sony and HBO because they're so just, there's a feel good vibe to it. And I just got to say one thing, when I first when we first showed this film to, um, or up, up cut of the film to the executives at Sony, Sony Latin, they were saying, you know, in seeing this film, it brought me to tears. And it reminds me of when I go to, you know, the Campesinos and you just get that heartbeat of that music. But that's, this film is like the music you wanted to be able to share with people. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, you, you know, they go and find the, the huge stars, but it's their parents who are playing this type of music and they wish they could sign this kind of music. But this film has captured that, the Campesino music. And so I've been, we've been so delighted that, um, that Sony Latin and HBO took on the film. Oh, I, I'm, I'm glad too. It was therapy for the country and universally as well. Um, Vada, I, 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 listen, I know you're a very experienced, you know, uh, documentary filmmaker, but, I kept thinking about you and, and directing this film and I've been lucky enough to go to some of those parts of Mexico. Was it, was, I mean, it must have been mesmerizing directing this Fandango at the wall, going through some of the most beautiful, you know, communities in Mexico, the concert in New York, like how was that for you as a director and, and, and what was the undertaking for you? What were kind of some difficult things or, or things that you felt? Cause I had goosebumps just, just experiencing it all with you as, as an audience member. Mm -hmm. um, well, I want to just, before I go into that, I want to add to something that Kabir just said, which I think is really important. Um, you know, one of the things that happened, we kept saying, like, this is the law of attraction, like all the people who, you know, share, I'm also an immigrant, you know, you're an immigrant. Um, we, we just kind of share a vision of what, what um, you know, a diverse population, how, how, kind of enriching that is and what a positive thing it is and what a positive thing it is to have people from different countries coming here and contributing and you know so we we share that and the other thing that we share which I think is really important I'm hoping will inspire our audience is that we all believe that through our storytelling through our actions we have the power to to shift the course of history that we have the power through our small, you know, through our stories, through we do this, that, through our creativity, that we actually have an agency. And I think the Sonoracha musicians in the film, you know, Arturo, Kabir, Doug, um, Jorge, everyone involved in the film shares that, that power. That is, it's a form of power to have that understanding. And I'm hoping that we, we will be able to share that with our audience and they'll, they'll you know, that, we will, that we're empowering people to move forward, you know, from a place of power rather than resignation or hopelessness, you know, and some of the things that one could feel under the weight of, you know, some of the, the, the language and rhetoric that is being, you know, that is sort of dominating the culture right now. So I just wanted to, to just say that. Well, no, following through with that, I want to say, you've only been out on HBO this past week. You had us with us and the Filmmakers LA and the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And just in respect to what you just said, 
some audience members, I mean, you have people crying because it, they felt so moved by what you've given them. And, and, and whether that's something that's personal to them or something that we can grow to appreciate as human beings for the art of music and love and understanding, like you are already doing that. And that was so powerful to, to visualize at the film festival. So it's very exciting. That's just going to continue to spread as well through this film. Okay. So, yeah, please. You. Sorry, sorry. Thank about you. Yeah, appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, in regards to my experience of the film and making it, it was a beautiful challenge. I mean, it was definitely challenging. There, there wasn't a lot of lead time. There wasn't a lot of prep time. Um, it was, you know, we're moving through huge, you know, swaths of countryside, you know, on roads going six, seven hours, you know, to places we'd never been. We didn't even know what we were going to be discovering or finding. So it was a truly great adventure, um, you know, shooting at the border. There was the tension of we weren't really permitted to shoot on the U.S. side. And we had to sneak a crew in there. You know, we had drones because we, we, I wanted to have these, you know, high angle shots. So you could see, you know, the border being transformed from an object, the device, the one that unites, you know, and you need to be able to see the two sides. So we could have been shot down. You know, we didn't know, but we just thought we're going to take the chance. And by the way, we, this is a cross-cultural collaboration. We have, you know, a significant amount of our crew is from Mexico and all our post-production was done in Mexico City. And that the, op, the drone operator was also one of our camera people is from Tijuana, Mexico and lives there. Um, so that was, you know, an, one of the exciting elements is that the making of the film actually embodies what you see. But I think the challenge for me was came you know, the actual making of it was super challenging, but the way that you, you are with those level of challenges is you're just basically present and you just, you know, you're in the very moment and you're just responding as it comes. You don't have a lot of time as a filmmaker. You, you appreciate it and it's wondrous, but at the same time, you're thinking like, I need to get this shot in order for this to happen. I'm going to have to get this if that's going to cut with that. I mean, you're constantly strategizing and you're, you're deciding like, do we want camera movement here? Do, we want this to be a big white static. And then you also want your, your subjects to feel like, you know, they can be completely natural. So, you know, you, you don't make a big deal out of it. You just simply do it. Mm -hmm. And you, you're very relaxed around it so that everyone else feels relaxed around it. And you're not afraid, you know, you have to kind of be fearless with the camera. You have to be fearless with the production. You just have to go in because that's the only option you have really if you're going to to capture the material that you need to in the way that you need to. There's no double thinking. It's just the exact in the moment. It, and that I think is why they say it's kind of like war. I mean, I've never been in, I've had to escape a war in Israel, but I've never been in a war, but I imagine it's a lot like that. Like there's no hesitation. You just go, you know? <laughs> Just go. Well, I'm glad that you, you, you brought that up and, and particularly about your subjects. Like, I mean, I know you as a very warm and engaging person that good, feels good to be around, but how, just for anybody out there as well that are even going to documentaries and things, how do you work with your subjects? Like, is, is there a, you know, how do you, because it's, it's different when obviously doing something narrative to having people's real life experiences. How do you work? And obviously, particularly, there's obviously, you know, a language difference as well with some, some people. So how does that work for you in, in this particular film? Um, well, I feel, you know, it's a deep privilege to be able to tell other people, you know, to be able to reveal people as they are. Mm -hmm. And so I always... You know, I, I feel like very deep, I feel a love for the people who are in my films. I, I literally, I, I, what I do is I just see them, I just look at them and I just see the, their being, you know, and I just fall in love with this person. That's how I do it. And I, then I just, and that, that never goes away. And then it just, it just opens everything up because that is truly on the most fundamental level, we are all, you know, these extraordinary beings on this planet. Mm -hmm. We all have a story that's important and valuable, you know, and matters and, you know, all of that. And so if you just, you let go of, all, you know, everything and you just see things as they are, you know, then it just kind of, it's okay. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's how we do it. I, you know, I, I honestly go as far as saying is that, you know, I almost want to, 
watch your documentary over and over again just to heal and to feel and to learn and to appreciate and to love and to enjoy this beautiful context of music. It must have been amazing for you, Kabir, to go, you know, this conversation started in New York, you take it to Mexico, you travel on this whole amazing journey and then bringing it back to New York in this beautiful concert. Like, I want Fandango at the wall, like everywhere, all over the world, like global, you know, global experiences everywhere with this amazing, enchanting experience. Like, was that a great theme, bring it to New York, but also is it something you want to do and, and just to carry around through other places because it's healing and it's beautiful and it's a wonderful experience. You know, this, this film is really, Fandango at the Wall is really one of discovery. And in, in making this film, um, it really wasn't that we were bringing the Fandango or San Hiroshi to anywhere because in some remarkable way, the Fandango exists in so many of these communities already. Um, in New York, there's a community of Hiroshi artists and I needed to borrow a Leona, uh, which is sort of like the base. And I call someone, they said, hey, why don't you just pick up the Leona tomorrow? We're having a Fandango in the Bronx Park. So you are? So yeah, we do it once every month. And so there's a community there. Uh, I was in Atlanta, we were screening the film uh, just um, last week. We screened it a couple times in the Mexican consulate. And this person came up, he said, I have a Hirocho band here in Atlanta. Uh, do you ever want to come to Fandango? I was like, yeah, definitely. You know, um, I was in Europe and there's a Fandango, there's a Hirocho community there. So I encourage anyone watching there who really um, enjoys this, this film, you know, to go to a Fandango. There's not, um, there's not going to be anyone charging you admission. There's no ticket to buy. You just sort of show up and you'll make a handful of new friends. And so, um, you know, heaven is here on this earth. You just have to know where to look. And I think you can find a part of it at a Fandango because there's a feeling of solidarity and community and love and family. And so um, just Google the name of your city that you're living and find the, and type in San Hirocho. And you might find a Mexican-American uh, community that's just uh, gonna be your new friends or, or at least welcome you into this world. So we were conscientious about, you know, the bring it to New York, but, you know, we're not, we're just telling a story. And in, in some, in some- I mean, uh, you don't wanna spend the rest of your life producing these concerts and taking them all out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we did a little bit. We, 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 we were, um, Jorge and I went to France and we did, we did a Fandango with Eiffel Tower. It just so happened we were in France and there was a community of Hirochos gonna, gathering from all over Europe that they were gonna be doing a 12 hour Fandango in Paris, the Eiffel Tower. And we all gathered at a Mexican cultural institute and then we got onto the subway at the Metro. And we just, it was like combustible. We just started playing on the Metro station and like this whole subway ride was this Hir San Hirocho and Zapateado on the, on the Metro on the way. So that's the great thing about musicians. You can't, it's like breathing. You just can't like stop breathing. You have to keep playing. It's just like this thing that, so um, as much as, um, no, I think this is thing that's going to be a permanent thing for life, the pursuit yeah. of the Fandango. But I think, um, I think there's a strong diaspora out there already. Oh, absolutely. And I just also want to say, you know, I, well, I am not a musician. I love music. I couldn't live without music. Music is a bomb for me in my life. It's, you know, anything ever, you know, since I can remember, I've always loved music and listened to it a lot. So, but I did buy what's called a mosquito, which is a really small harana from Dacho, who makes them. And as you see, Ramon makes them and you can, and I'm going to learn how to use it. I've just been, Great. it's on my list, as they say. Oh, I love so it. I really am going to do, I'm determined. And so I just want to say that also, these that they make those instruments and they have websites and you can and they have Facebook pages and you can buy these instruments from them and they also teach it so you can learn from them how to play the instrument and then really participate even if you're not a musician you can become a musician oh I love that that's it it's very exciting I mean okay I'm going to be looking up these websites now for sure um I you know the greatness is is that we we, we enjoyed having it at the film festival and it was so great because, you know, it was in partnership with New Filmmakers LA and the Academy Awards, uh, the, Heart, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences uh, to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, you know, how wonderful was it to have it under, under all of those uh, amazing organizations as part of this collaboration? I, I mean, wonderful, but I got to uh, pass on Nevada because it's, to me, 
this is an alphabet soup. I'm not, I'm not in the film world, right? So like, this is, these are all new organizations. Sure all, I know, I know. Obviously, I, I'm f very familiar now uh, the, with the Academy and your incredible August group, but it's been a really um, an honor and a privilege to uh, to have this kind of attention. And then you're, I mean, you can pick any film and that you chose to focus. Um, and the panel yesterday, talking to these, the young filmmakers, I'm just so, I, I'm just reminded of, uh, you know, when, when, um, Ramon talks about his musical inspiration is Jimi Hendrix. And it's just, you never know when you're planting seeds and you know how this film might inspire someone years, decades from now on their journey. And so you're just always trying to pass it forward, you know, and pay it forward. And, and so the more we can be talking and sharing the project and, and behind the scenes of the project with younger generation, I just think that's uh, really powerful because Art is what we leave behind, you know, you don't take this with you. And so, but you can certainly leave back, leave these contributions behind. And if all I do is I'm known for this project with Varda, I would, I think I'm happy because it's, yeah. it's the allegory and love we want to, we want to, um, you know, generate in, in the, and then even the next movies that come out. And that leads me to say, Varda, a question I want to ask you in relation to what um, Kabir just said is that now this film this beautiful film has now been released to the world and is on hbo max is very exciting what do you want your audience to take from your film um i just want to add one thing to yep. what beer said before i go to that one and that is that you know i'm very grateful that new filmmaker la does champion you know and has ever since i can remember emerging voices you know diverse voices all different types of filmmakers that it is a celebration of filmmakers telling authentic stories. Um, and I've just, you know, enjoyed so many of the films through the years and continue to. So I want to, and I want to also commend the Academy for now, you know, embracing that approach and taking real steps to start, you know, embracing different voices, celebrating different kinds of voices, different kinds of people, different ways of telling stories. And so I, you know, I'm grateful that we get to be part of that and that we, you know, get to celebrate that with the Academy and with New Filmmakers LA through, you know, the kinds of film that we make. I mean, when I think about the people involved with our film, it's, yes, there, we have a lot of people from Mexico. We also have people from all over the world, from Iran, from Iraq, from different parts of the United States, from, you know, Cuba. Like we, this is a truly, this film I think exemplifies the exact philosophy, um, you know, of New Filmmakers LA and now that the Academy has adopted. So I'm just, you know, it, 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 it makes sense. You know, once again, the law of attraction is, is uh, you know, occurring. So I just wanted to recognize that. And Thank you very much for that. And yeah, you know, just following on from that, I just want to say, you know, what, what, there's so many things in your film and so many people can get, gain so many things from watching your film and experiencing your film. Is there a couple of things that maybe you just want your audience to, to take from after making this project? Um, well, I like to believe that, you know what, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll shift, that there'll be a shift of perception of Mexico not just Mexico though, but the whole, you know, sort of Latin and Latinx Latino culture and how it's, you know, it's being perceived. I also want the audience to, to believe that, you know, no matter what conflicts or what hardships, you know, we're facing, that when we come together, you know, with the determination to, to unify, with the ter determination to find common, something that, you know, we have in common through art, through culture, that we can transcend and we can, we can solve, you know, the conflicts, you know, that we face. And, um, you know, as Kabir had said earlier, you know, that in terms of our relationship between the United States and Mexico, we will always be neighbors. That will never end. We are neighbors. And, you know, in, in all, you know, the religious and spiritual writings, um, you know, it is said, you know, that we need to, what do they say, treat our neighbor as we would ourselves? Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, I hope that that also, you know, is, is people take that, you know, out of the film and think about themselves and their own lives and how they treat their neighbors and how we treat each other. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I want to just, you know, you're both 
so experienced in your different fields and I'm sure, you know, people of having watched, you know, Fandango at the wall, hearing this interview, we have a filmmaking audience. When somebody wants to take an undertaker as a filmmaker to make a film, do you have you know, any piece of advice that you could, you could share with filmmakers to kind of help them on their journey in, in, in making their creative projects? I'll talk about this on the production side um, and maybe Mark could talk about the craft of it. Just on the production side, I just think it's so important to have the right team. And, and I mean, down to the right, at every level, you have to have buy-in from the director down to, I mean, whoever. You just want to make sure people are there for the right reasons and they're, they're into the project. And um, we spent a lot of time thinking about like um, where to do the post-production and, and the editing and so forth. And so everything was sort of intentional, right? And the decisions we made were intentional. And I think um, just as producers out there, you're, you, you live these projects, right? And so I come from a business background. This is almost like building a startup company, right? And so you need to like, you need like the investors. And so you need to be, have a welcoming spirit to the investors and include the investors in, in, in part of, the, or the donors in, into the project and the distributors. Like we were, you know, we, we were throwing Fandangos and inviting everyone uh, along the way. And so my um, advice on really creating a film or any project is to be inclusive in the journey because this really is a journey. It's not just about the film team, it's about everyone along the way, the patrons, the donors, the uh, in investors, uh, the people who may be tangentially helping you with some small, bring them into the journey somehow because it creates this movement and energy. Um, and I just I just don't think there should be a wall between the film teams over here making the film here. You know, it's it's we're all part of this thing. And so you can really think of it as, you're not just making a film, you're making a movement. And how can you invite everyone into it? Showing them rough cuts or whatever because I think it's important to bring people along on the journey. And I was, I was very frequently in touch with um, all members of the team um, from the, you know, on, on the senior side to, and especially on the senior side to making sure they were always aware of where we were in the project. It wasn't just six months go by and where are we? No, no, we're talking, you know, so there, it's constant communication and it was just on a startup company. And then, and then you have an exit or whatever. And that's, so that's, that'll be my advice. Just bring people along for the journey. Thank you, Kubi. That's, that's brilliant advice. Thank you. It's very meaningful because believe it or not, a lot of filmmakers, they, they, they kind of feel like a little bit threatened and they just want to stay really protected and they want to sort of isolate themselves. And I, I, I completely embrace uh, Kabir's philosophy of you know, just including people. And, and it's more fun that way, honestly. And everything's much more harmonious and everyone, you know, has great contributions. You know, you don't have to take them all, but you listen to everyone. And there's so many great gold nuggets out there, you know, and also it's just fun when everyone's on board and everyone wants it to succeed and everyone's, you know, working towards the same, you know, purpose and intention. So I agree wholeheartedly with that. I think the other thing is, and this is another example that Kabir has, you know, manifested, is to, if you haven't done it before, don't feel like you have to wait to, for something or something or something or something to occur, you know, that you need to go to film school and you need to, you know, watch all the films that are out there and you need to, you know, a lot of times people feel like they have to take off a whole list of things before they can do something. But I think you can actually kind of proclaim yourself, you know, I'm a filmmaker and then sort of work backwards into that. But, you know, just not let anything hold you back and not wait on anything or anyone really. And just kind of dive in and you're gonna be learning and figuring it out along the way. And it's just, a, I think it's a really great way to, to kind of get going on it. And Don't wait for today. anything or anyone, I would say. Here we are today talking about your film because you dive straight in and, and, and you did it and you've got a great team around you. And, you know, I have to say, I, you know, I, I'm a more enriched human being from watching your film, you know, and I'm grateful for what you gave me as an audience member, for what you've given everybody at the film festival. And I wish I could just go into all the pockets of houses that are going to experience the, you know, on HBO Max as well, because, you know, you really have brought humanity a step forward through through Fandango at the wall and, and and that I am grateful for that you both you and Kabir and and everybody you know made it um, together so I just want to say 
a big thank you from us at New Filmmakers LA. We love you both and um, just please just keep blessing us with more of your creativity. So thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us.